Are you ready? Yep. Oh, cool, good. Hey, Sensei. Hey, welcome. Good to see you guys. Okay. So we just do a bowing in standing. Oni guys mas. Yes, mas. Come apart uh, with your feet, parallel feet. Uh, unbuckle your knees, drop into into your center. Uh, flatten your uh, uh, tailbone and let it fall straight down. Flatten your lower back. Lift up the perineum. Breathe into the lower back. Let it fill out all the way to the front. Expand the rib cage up your torso. Draw the arms out, opening the chest. Extend the fingers outwards. Keep opening the chest and raise the head. As the chest comes down, you elevate the head up, the crown of the head. Drop the elbows, drop the shoulders. Keep extending the fingers outwards. All fingers out. Feet flat on the ground. Breathe into the lower back. Flatten the lower back. Drop the tailbone straight down. Opening the chest. Can alternate between uh, moving the arms forward, flattening the space between the shoulder blades, moving the arms back, feeling the stretch across the chest. Slowly bring your arms down, relax the shoulders, relax the elbows, keep the fingers extended into the ground. Keep your fingers extended. Draw the head up. Have a straight line from one leg straight through the body to the crown of your head. Have a straight line from the other foot straight, uh, straight up, meeting on the crown of the head. And you, you extend up. And you feel that you have the brace from both feet in a very, very <laughs> narrow pyramid, sharp pyramid shape. Extend the fingers, let them continue out and let them float all the way up, float all the way, all the way up. So now go completely vertical. Uh, bring your palms together. As you stretch up, you can even come up on your toes. Just stretch up, extend upwards. Opening the chest. And release the shoulders down, the elbows down. Bring the elbows down. Bring the hands down. Reconnect with the ground. All time. Breathe into the lower back. Flatten the lower back. Pull up the perineum. Lift up the pelvic floor, come down on your knees, flat, flat feet, relax the arms a bit. Feel the fingers with, feel the fingers, extend them up, bring them up to the chest, dig your fingers into the chest and pry open the chest, pull out, pull, 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 pull out and extend up, fingers out, dropping the elbows, flatten the lower back, raising the head. Turn to your right into humming position, but keep the stretch through the arms, across the upper back. In order not to collapse the front, keep stretching up, keep stretching up and around. So when the hand comes into humming, you have a continuous stretch from fingertip to fingertip. Come back to the middle. Don't lose the stretch. Stretch out, stretch out, 
So when you turn to your right or left into Hamu, now you can alternate left and right. So when you bring, feel the stretch across your chest, feel the stretch across your upper back. So as you come back in, into Hamu, feel the stretch in front of the chest, over your uh, shoulder blades, into the hands. Come back to the middle, keep stretching up, 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 opening the chest, opening between the shoulder blades. Even when you bring your arms down, keep the stretch in the, uh, between the fingertips. So you're feeling the stretch. Reconnect with the lower back. I keep saying that because I keep losing connection. I keep losing my awareness of my lower, lower back. Pull up the perineum to contact, to bring the contact of the legs into your hira, into your upper body, and out through the arms. Draw the head up as the chest comes down. So kind of lift your head out of your chest. Flatten the lower back, pull up the perineum. Focus on the inner arch of the legs. Now you want to have a, a, a travel between the feet. So you want to have this feeling as the slinky goes in and transfers from leg to leg. You want to have a lightness as you as you weight goes down in one leg. You want to kind of bounce off, bounce into the other leg. So as you have from side to side, you want to have this lightness of bounce, 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 bounce. You kind of stand on. Uh, Step on this bounce back and board. So you have a little bit bounce. You come from leg to leg. Then when you start rotating in your hip, in your in your hips, in uh, what do you call it, the, in the hip joint. So as you start rotating leg. You turn the hip. Now remember that the shoulder sits upon the hip. So don't rotate the shoulders. Let the shoulders sit on top of your hip. So rotate. Rotate. So when you start doing this, you, your arms are gonna hang and naturally gonna swing like that. But keep your high up, your centered rotation. And from a from a from a flat horizontal uh, turning side to side, you can create a little bit of a undulation that becomes the eternal leg. You come down on one leg, coming back up, over to the other, down on that leg, up and over, coming over. So you have this undulation in the motion from, from leg to leg, it's through rotation of the legs. Boom, boom, boom. Now this, uh, I'm just learning about this. Um, Mainly everything that I'm kind of trying to learn is I'm incorporating from what Dan Harden is teaching me. Uh, I'm a complete novice at it, so uh, forgive me if there's something not completely uh, correct there. But you can see how this motion relates to very, very much to this warm-up exercise that we have with the jaw. Now, in order to be able to move the hip and the spine, uh, we need to come down in the knees because if you're too straight in the knees, you're not gonna have the ability to turn your hip. Then it's gonna be very limited here. Come down in your knees, and suddenly you're gonna have much more uh, ability to move through your hip. Keep the feet parallel at the moment, so you're limited in what you can turn. So this is a, so remember, even though we, we, we think this is a jaw exercise, it's not really. The exercise is for the lower body here. And you're actually, not just on the horizontal plane, you actually come out of the leg, up. Out of the leg, up. Out of the leg, up through the body, out through the arms. Up through the body, out through the arms. Now, so when we go back to the swinging the arms, from the movement instigated by the legs, you want to reach out, express the fingers, stretch out the fingers. So you're 
creating the stretch all the way through, all the through the body, all the way down through the legs. You get a really good stretch here. And you can bring that all the way up and over. And here comes the other leg. So you bring this hand up, stretch through the back, stretch through the arms, bring it up, turn, and come back. So you can begin with one hand. So you feel this stretch. One hand out, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, fingers here. Then we can alternate. So you, we saw this when we start swinging the body. So then you alternate one hand up. Here comes the other hand extending. Keep extending the, uh, the fingers on both hands. So you start having this rotation through the body. So this is the big motion, yeah? But imagine you're gonna now bring this in front of you and suddenly it's gonna be much smaller alter alternating uh, motion. So this should originate from the legs. So that lends itself to, let's see, here comes the Shulman EQ. So extend, 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 and here comes the Shulman EQ. Always start from the center, grabbing with the legs. Here it comes over, and suddenly there's a you can see martial art techniques generate from the legs up to the body. EQ. Kopyu Ho. We do it again. We come into Iriminage. We do it again. We come into Kotegaishi. We come again. Here and here, and we have Shiho Nage. Shiho Nage, which is also the sword coming through. So it's always starts between the feet, between the feet. So even if you are then walking, it has the same quality. We have these motions for Koku Nage. This motion for Koku Nage. Stepping off the line, turning Koku Nage. Stepping off the line, throwing coconut. Stepping off the line, throwing coconut. Now, this motion is the spiraling up, up, and up, or back, or back down. So you can have this up and bring it down. That we can do with a bokken. So if you bring the bokken, you've seen also say doing this, but that generates it generates from the center of the body, generates this between the feet here, and then it comes up. It has this rotational quality that lends itself to the cut to the yokoman. So you can do it clockwise. If you do it anti-clockwise, it lends itself to Hidari Kami. This rotation begins in the vertical and comes over. Begins in the body as it rotates up. Even as, as you just do this, you rotate up and you come cut. You rotate up and cut. Rotate up and cut. Even just lifting, cutting. Same thing on the left. Now, when you cut on the left, bring your right hand slightly in because it's awkward here. So open the right hand and bring it closer. Much more difficult, much more awkward, much less, maybe not much less, but less power. 
because it's the hands are here. And that's many times why I think in Iwama uh, weapons that uh, we don't do any final cuts on the left side. They usually are blocks and parries, while in the katas, the final cut happens many times on the right hand side because then the bodily alignment is more correct. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when we grab the bok in our jaw, our attention goes to the grip and we lose our balance, we lose our sense of. Uh, stability. So it's always good to take the weapon away and re-establish where we started. So if you come back to parallel feet, drop down, go through the motion again, flat feet on the ground, uh, inner arch focus so your feet doesn't fall open, uh, knees down, sit down on the bar stool, flat in the lower back, pull up the perineum, contact the torso, open up into the hands. Even if the hands are down here, yeah. come out of your knees, come up, still feeling the stretch, and you have it, you have the strength throughout to the fingers. If you turn, yeah. Yeah. still feel that, yeah. The connection between the fingertips, across the chest, across the shoulder blades, is there. Now there is a rotational really, really good stretch that you can have, uh, have a look at. So when we start with this feeling, you have this feeling of that throwing the, corner, throwing the arms up, but stretch, they're being stretched all the way through the body, all the way through uh, the arm, through the body down, through the legs, you know? so you come up. Now, when you come around here, put, let the other hand stay on the back. As you follow the palm, all the way up to spiral all the way. So keep spiraling. If the right hand is up, you're spiraling from the left leg. So use the hand to try to uh, spiral, uh, twist as much as you can. And so it's an upward and downward spiral. And then you just, for the sake of it, spiral as much as you can uh, to the opposite way. Vertical, vertical spiral. Come back to the middle, release down the center, release the backhand, and just uh, get into your legs again. So the legs are doing this, this gently swinging. Uh, release, uh, put the other hand on your, on your behind. Fold, uh, fold up, follow your palm up, all the way up, all the way around. Keep spiraling, keep twisting. Keep rotating, rotation through the arm, rotation through the torso for that matter, and rotation through the legs. And left hand connects to right leg. And then ro rotate it all the way over to the, as much as possible the other way. Vertical, don't lean. It's an up-down stretch. Come back to the middle and gently dr drive it down, release the other hand. They are still connected. So when you come back, when you do these motions, it's all connected. So here, Taino Henko. We come Taino Henko. Morote Dori. Kokyuho. So a lot of this has to do with uh, uh, moving from legs to legs, but don't go 100%. It's always a gentle coming over, bouncing up and oops, frozen and throw. Murote Dori Kokiho. You grasp both hands. Relax, expand, drop the elbows, drop the shoulders, come around, extend the culture, drive in, use your hip and fold over. Don't overturn too much. So you're over, don't over twist. Other one. Uh, upon the showman, if we start from a showman, from a showman, you won't have a rotational quality through your body as you meet the other. As he brings it down to the side, he steps off slug, he brings it down, he grabs here, feel back in, just find yourself. Use both your arms, so don't be loop-sided. Have a good balance straight through the body. Extend, fingers comes up, elbows low, 
Now, drive it through the body. Drive it through the body as you come around. It's the, it's the spiraling motion. You drive it through the body. Show, uh, elbow comes in. You step in. Lock his uh, leg so he can't step back and bring him over. There's no point of trying to push him away that you sometimes see. They, they push like this. It's, he's just going to walk away. He's just going to take a few steps up and walk away. So once you have moved him in this place, he's being moved in here, then you block his escape route and you fold him over your hip. Now, of course, you don't always need to do that because as you come around, the hip motion is often enough and he will fall outside your knee. But in the old days, taking over your hip and, and throwing over uh, like that. Um, Tiny Henko. Offer the uh, arm softly. No, when you do Kihon, you're speaking about Kihon. Softly, when he grabs it firmly, fill out within his grip, accommodate his grip. Now, hand and foot together, come in. Rotate through. Come around. Now, the rotation is important here. Look at the legs. So, as you come in here, you place here. Now you want to have a rotation of the hip before you drive the leg back. So it's not a circular step. It's not a circular step. Taino Henko, don't be too close. Don't be here. He's going to be too close to strike you. This is safe distance. He's holding your hand out here. It's outside your center. That's why as you come in, now you bring it into your center. Turn the hip and come back, and you have sol solidity in your stance, yeah? In Avasa, in second step, you instigate, and as it comes, you blend, you match. So the second step in Avasa is working on the, on the matching. Here, boom, here, yeah? So offer, draw them out, and in, and respond. In the third step, in Kinnagare, once again, you have the stability with the hip. You have the, uh, you initiate by pulling him up and you actually reach past your point of uh, comfort here, into his realm, into his space. So he feels comfortable and safe to go for your arm. If you're here, he, he is crazy to jump go for your arm because this is waiting, yeah? This is waiting here. So you actually give him this appearance of, oh, here, come and get it. You know, like in the old days, come here, here. So we lean in, we give him, we give him the notion that, oh, yeah, I got it, yeah? Same thing with the hand. Give him the notion that he has to. As he comes for it, you have to return. So his arm reaches you on the return journey, not as you are coming out. So as you do this, you have to be very quick to change and you come around. So that you have to be kind of, uh, you have to be aware. So as you come here, you're already ready and then you turn through. You come in, you change and you drive it through that you later can step through here. You do it in this line, offer, he comes in, rotate, step on through. Step in, and around, drive through, and step on through. There. Uh, we did some Suburi yesterday, so let's just have a look again. Let's continue with the Joe Suburi. Um, we did yesterday, remember that we want to move the body in one go. So don't reach for the jaw and then move everything. So everything starts again. So you have to, your legs will start everything. So as you come here, everything has to start together. Chokutsuki, number one. Just together, everything here. Well, if you, if you look at the details, what you want to do is this arm count, the jaw comes to the hand as you reach for it. 
and then it follows the jaw out. Once it reaches the end, you let that actually flow in the front as well because then you have more punch power as you come forward. Of course, when we do solo training, we have time to, to exaggerate the motions to feel the sensation of the motion. When we do partner practice, especially when we do fast partner practice, we have to make the movements uh, shorter and, and tighter. And then the front arm may not slide as much. Now in the Kaishi scheme, number two, Kaishi scheme in a similar manner, don't grab the jaw and then start. From this point, connect your body, come down in the knees, flatten the lower back, pull up the perineum, feel the sensation through your body, extend through the hands. So if your body is connected, the slack taken out, you will be much more responsive once you go. Once you go, your body is already perfect. Yeah? If you are switched off at the point of jaw kamai, this is the jaw kamai, then if you go for it, everything has to start clicking into place before you can deliver it. And that's way, way too late, yeah? So that's why kamai means the posture that is already connected. So the kamai posture is a connected form, yeah? So that's why you take time to stand in kamai. So you have time to go through the body, legs, center, lower back, breathe in, fill out the hand, here. Then, so when everything goes, you're ready. Detail on the grip here. So don't do this. Once, like, like the Shokutsuki, they meet each other. They come to meet each other. But not only that, the body is now prepping to turn. Don't do this and lift high up. Your hand is below your eyes. Your hand is this way. But it's not the opening here, but the turning happens through the body. So you're actually turning, turning, and as you turn, you're able to come out. So here, your body turns. So it's this, this, this. Now, on this grip, don't be too wide. Then you're not using this. Allow, open this hand in order to allow your right hand to flow forward to about this level. Don't be too short when you can have better length. Don't draw the front hand in too much. Then you're going to lose the stability in your jaw. It's going to be front heavy. Don't have too much. You're not using your back arm. Open up, see where here sits in. Now you have the nice wave function in your jaw. So if you need to do this, you need to suppress, you need to block. You have a swallow tail. I call this the swallow tail. Uh, so it's back and forehand, back and forehand. They but alternate. Excuse me. How much do you anchor with your backhand, with your right hand right now? Oh, uh, just a second. Anchor, what, how do you mean with anchoring? I, I, I kind of anchor it to my, to my body. Oh, okay, you mean that sense, okay. Uh, yeah. So when I, sh when I ski, yeah. have a look. So then my hand is not, it's not, uh, try to focus here. It's not centered because actually I can come out more with my left hand. So if I be there, it'd be, if that- but Your arm off. is, right? So your arm is, cl is close to your body. It's not like- Yes, yes. It's this, this, yeah. Okay. So something is caught underneath here. So let me do this side. Okay. Here, so like the hand comes forward yeah. about here, but my arm yeah. here is tight. So Saito-sensei would sometimes put a piece of, Sometimes he would put a piece of paper oh. under it 
<laughs> like this. Yeah. Or he, he would do the technique like this. So he said, this is no good. Yeah. Because it falls out, yeah? So. All right. But you don't, remember, you don't ever want to have a posture when you become, when you become too cramped. Yeah. You want to have the opening stretch. Yeah. Yeah, but especially if you don't have strong arms, you really need to, to anchor, you know, I feel like you kind of have to anchor to your body somehow. But that, um, that has to support feeling, yeah. That has to support feeling. Yeah. It's it's true. Have a look. So when you have the ski here, uh -huh. now this this here uh -huh. is also supported by the back leg, by the lower back lower back that is expanded out is supported with the back leg supported in, in the hara here and here mm -hmm. so now this is this is strong this is has your back your legs everything has this this is your front uh, shoulder mm -hmm. now that is shoulder actively dropping elbow actively dropping and has the sword hand mm -hmm. that has the sword hand here so you have a very strong stance here and look at the angle of the jaw it's not flat because you have an angle there that you could use, same as the showman's angle. The same as the showman angle, it has a suppression quality through the arm, through the jaw, or through the bokken, as it, depending on what weapon you're using. Okay. Now, you might see different uh, Aikido people using the, the jaw very close to the body. Yeah. That can be, I don't say it is, but it could be harking back to spear or much longer weapons that you would have to rest on the body because they would be too heavy to hold just outside. You would have to rest them on the body. You would rest them on the body because they're too heavy and strong. And remember that the jaw, some say, stems from the spear, the yari. Yeah. But I feel that the jaw is more free because it's lighter. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we have more play with it. But still, this holds true many times. And if you have the sword, and this is what Saito Sensei would do. So when you have the sword here, draw the elbows in. Uh -huh. Uncomfortably. You're not used to it. So make it uncomfortable. Oh, it doesn't feel natural, people say. It doesn't feel natural. No, it's not natural. It's not natural to cut with the samurai sword. But, <laughs> so draw the elbows in, which means it becomes tight here. Yeah? So you have this tightness. It won't let go. It won't let go of the sword there, and it won't let go of the sword on that side either. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't let go of it, yeah? So it has that quality. Thank you. Uh, just even when you have such a tightness in the sense of being solid and, and controlled, you still want to have an expansion within your posture so you feel that opening quality, yeah? So you can breathe, yeah? So you can breathe and you can move. You don't want to fix it or become rigid in your posture. It has this quality of connectedness, but uh, a connectedness that is fluid and you can move, yeah? Good. One, two, three. Ushiro. Ushiro ski. Uh, Suburi number three. Usually we learn it in step by step, yeah? We usually learn all of these things in step by step. So that would be this hand would push forward so this would be pushing forward so don't do something like this this pushes forward you drop down now this one is along the arm and now once again like like uh, it's uh, along the body here so if i don't be open here that comes in here so you would be here you have dropped in you're on the way to the back foot and when you raise the little here as you come back raise it just below your chin and then come here you stab into the chest you're still facing forward you still have a forward come eye. you do look behind because you need to see your target so you need to look but you are still forward facing in the in terms of the posture so so here if you break it up, remember, don't do this first. That's a bad habit, yeah? See, I still have that habit. So go one, drop in, it flows back on the back foot, 
ask and raise up here and it stamps in. It has this quality, this quality, this quality. Now, this also can come over as much as possible, a little bit. It can't come over too much because then your hands are going to start break open, yeah? So it has to come over a little bit. Don't be right in front of your face. If you would hit yourself, then bring it over. I would always say over your shoulder here, there. So as you look here. So if they strike the jaw, it's on your shoulder and not in your face, yeah? Can so I, if I do the same, yeah? Also with the weight 50-50 or always you want the weight uh, which forward? The weight here. Uh, it's 50 50 here. Okay. But the knees 50, are 50 50. Okay. But the, 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 of course, every time you are uh, taking off from one leg or the other, there's going to be a, a moment of boom. Yeah. Boom. There's a moment where you use it, but you're never really standing on one leg. Okay. Once you have delivered, boom, you're kind of back to 50 50. Or, or if you're already back and you're moving somewhere else, you're, you have this quality we did in the beginning. Boom, 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 boom. So you're traveling from leg to leg. So you go one, two, three, four, five. So the leg, of course in Aikido we have one, two steps. One, two, one, two, yeah. Boom. But even if you do one, one, two, one, different like that. Um, if you do third subbury in, <coughs> remember, once again, posture when you start, connect the body, come down, flatten the lower back, bring, uh, uh, lift up the perineum, the hoist the pelvic floor, ever slightly, opening the chest, flatten the lower back, connect through the arms and fingers, Extend here. Bring this hand down as much as possible because you need a good distance here. There's no point of being here and doing this and being all loose. So for especially for your shimiro ski, bring your left hand down there because then when you push, you have a good grip here. Now, if your lower back is connected, then the delivery is going to be strong and solid because your back is involved. Every time we do weapon practice or anything really, if your lower back is not involved, connected, you're not gonna have any power in your hands. And I'm just learning about this, so I'm just fresh to this. Uh, it's less than a minute left. I hope this was helpful. I did record this session because someone asked me yesterday to record it. So that's why I kept it quite formal. But if you want to watch it again, I will post it on our Facebook page. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sensei. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Less than a minute. Is it One, two, three, four, Thank you, Sensei. Arigato Hi, Arigato. Domo, Arigato gozaimashita. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.